I'm thrilled to be able to share this opportunity with you. I visited a presentation from Mrs. Tully a month or so ago, and I was very excited when she said she would be happy to come talk to us. So our speaker today is a Holocaust survivor. She was one of 10,000 survivors whose life experience has been recorded in the Holocaust Oral History Center in San Francisco. Renee is a frequent speaker at schools and other places for about her experiences. On January 27, 1995, she appeared on the front cover of the Mercury News in San Jose for the 50th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp. And I'm sure she'll tell you where that is if you're not familiar with it. Renee was born in East Germany, which is now Poland, and was raised in France. And after World War II, she went to Guatemala and then to New York before moving here to California in 1982. Upon retiring from Siemens in 1999, she moved to Placerville, where she is now. And she raises Shetland sheep for their wool. Her interests are gardening, spinning, knitting, and food preservation. She is a docent at Marshall Gold Discovery Park in Coloma. And we are thrilled to have her share with us the experiences of her life. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, first, a question. The word Holocaust, where does that come from? It comes from the Greek, ancient times, and it means basically complete extermination by fire. And the Holocaust was not only for Jews. Uh, I have the figures, but I'm not going to go into it. Half of it were Jews, and half of it was non-Jews, Christians, nuns, priests, soldiers, whatever, whatever Hitler didn't like. Anyway, by the way, I was born in Germany, which is now Poland. What does that make me? A Jerpole. <laughs> I mean, I moved to France with my mother. My parents were divorced in uh, around 1934. At that point, I was eight years old. <clears throat> and I went to school. I got stuck in the first year of school because I couldn't speak French. And I couldn't graduate from one class to the other. So finally, I graduated, and things went fine. In 1939, Fran uh, France and, and England declared war on to Germany, who had already been in war in Poland and Russia, and the Germans started occupying Paris. Mother, who looked Semitic, especially by Hitler's description, which is, you have a slanted nose, your earlobes are attached to your cheek, and you can check that. They don't bubble down. You got flat feet, and your old all old enough to know, all Jews used to be circumcised. So that was the description that Hitler mother looked Semitic, so she moved to our property in southern France. I remained in Paris in our apartment. Went to private, oh yes, we were co I was called to the principal of all Paris schools and was told I could no longer attend school. I was German, I was one of the enemies, they didn't want me in their school. We could argue what, how much we wanted, saying, no, we are refugees from Germany. Didn't do any good. So that was the end of my schooling. Luckily, we could afford it, and I took Engl English lessons. You know, that stuff they speak overseas, <laughs> which half of the time I don't understand. And Things went fine, mother moved south, we stayed in contact off and on as well as we could. I went horseback riding. I didn't have any problem. I just, we decided not to wear the yellow star, which was required by Hitler, which was a yellow star of David, which said Juif on side, it said Jew, because, so we changed our name. I didn't look Jewish, I had no problem. If there was a raid on the street by the French, I would speak German to them. 
They thought I was the occupying army, so they didn't bother me. They let me go. If the Germans stopped me, I also spoke German. Oh, I was one of theirs. Hi, wie geht's now? So here I was, no problem. Until one day, I was ready to go horseback riding, and there was a knock on the door. It was a good looking young man. Oh, I didn't want that yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is technology, and that doesn't really fit, fit in here. This is fairly new, so I'm not so used to it yet. So, good looking young man, he was about 20. And you know girls what I mean, right? Good looking young man. <laughs> and he said to me, you know, your mother sent me, and he shows me a picture I had dedicated to mother. So I knew he had seen mother. She sent me, she's outside of Paris, and she'd like to see you. And I didn't know how come I didn't know that she was outside of Paris. I just agreed. He said, take some clothes and a blanket and come with me. So I went with him. Trusty, got into the car, we drove for a while. Didn't realize where we were going. We went to the suburb of Paris. And we got to a place, to me, by memory, I can compare it to a motel nowadays, building around with a courtyard in the middle. We got out of the car. He got me to the door. At the door, there was another good-looking man in an olive green uniform, black patches, with two S's on each, the SS, the German Gestapo. So anyway, I knew something was wrong. He left, I was ushered inside, inside in the courtyard I found my mother. We were happy to see each other, but also wondering what's gonna happen. We are prisoners now. <laughs> 